Hey guys, today we're going to talk about going gray rock. So I recently made a video on gaslighting and what exactly gaslighting is and what it does to us and then how you can cope with gaslighting. And if you haven't had a chance, I will leave that link to that video in the description box below so you can go and check it out. But briefly in that video, I mentioned this idea of going gray rock as a way to deal with narcissists. And I mentioned that I wanted to make a follow-up video talking about what gray rock is and how to go gray rock. So this is that video. We're going to talk about what gray rock is and how to be gray rock in a situation where you can't get away or escape a narcissist because there are lots of situations where we might not be able to get away from a narcissist. Even if we are able to leave, sometimes this might end up being our co-parents. Uh, it could be a member of your family. It could be a boss or someone that you work with that you have to deal with on almost a daily basis. So there's lots of situations where as much as we might want to leave or not deal with a narcissist, we still have to. So gray rock is a solution to dealing with a narcissist in a way that isn't going to provoke the behaviors that we want to avoid provoking and how we can still kind of maintain our sanity. So that's what this video is going to be about. So the first thing I wanted to do was distinguish the difference between no contact and gray rock. So no contact is basically what it sounds like. It's having no contact with the narcissist. It's cutting off all ties of communication. And this is obviously the best case scenario for dealing with people like that. If we are in a situation where we can completely go no contact with a narcissist, that is the best way to handle them. That is the best way to get rid of them and stop them from influencing your mental health and influencing life and making your life a living hell is to go no contact. But as I just described, there are lots of situations where that can't happen. So enter gray rock. So what is gray rock? Gray rock is the idea of being very, very bland and boring when interacting with a toxic person or a narcissist. It's the idea that there is nothing special about a gray rock. Right? It's just a gray rock, like nothing spectacular about a gray rock. And it's basically acting as if you are that, a gray rock. Because psychologically abusive people and narcissists, they feed off emotional energy. Their goal is to create a reaction in you, an emotional reaction and to make you upset. But if you're not giving them an emotional reaction, you're not going to give them what they want. And the idea is that by not giving them what they want, by being bland and being boring, means that the behaviors are eventually going to stop or very much decrease. Conversations should be strictly simplistic and non-stimulating. Yes, no, very short one word responses, answers, eh, not giving an emotional reaction. Another thing that grave rock responses should be is non-committal. Now this could be tricky because the narcissist might try to lead you into making some sort of committing response, but we want to try to remain as neutral and as non-committal as possible because if they get that commitment and for some reason you can't commit, it's going to end up being a huge emotional blow up. So it's also really important that any responses are just very like in the middle, neutral responses They can't really be taken one way or the other. So that's why as simplistic as possible is the best strategy for being gray rock. So what's an example of like a non-committal phrase? So let's say you're at work and your dramatic coworker is trying to drag you into a conversation about a new employee. Let's say like, oh my God, did you see so-and-so? Like they're totally failing. They suck. Like, wow. Like, did you see what they did? Like, what do you think about that? And a gray rock response would be, mm, I don't know. I mean, I guess I didn't see that. And that's it. That's all you have to say. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe is a great word. Maybe doesn't commit you one way or the other, like the word maybe. Because yeah. that way you're not ignoring them, right? You're just not giving them like an emotionally fueled response. Bland, boring, no emotional reaction. Second example with the co-parent. Co-parent says, oh my God, you're always at least five minutes late dropping off our kid. Like, can you try to be on time? Like, really, what is wrong with you? A response could be that's non-stimulating and non-committal. Okay, I'll try. 
And that's it. That's really all you have to say. There is no follow-up response required to that. Knowing when to respond is important when being gray rock too. Like asking yourself, does this even need a response? You need a response, short and bland, but sometimes things don't need a response. Maybe I'll try is a response and sometimes that's all you have to say. They might come back and attack you again. Be like, oh yeah, you're going to try? Like, my good, you know, eh. you don't need to respond. You already put forward a response and that's all that's needed. Another trick to going gray rock is to watch your body language and your facial expressions. Like we can sound bland and non-stimulating as possible, but if our face is giving it all away, like if we're showing signs that we're upset or we're conflicted, a narcissist is going to feed on that because they're going to know that they're getting to you. I think there's a saying that, I forgot what percent, but a lot of the percentage of communication is body language. And that is very true. I mean, we say a lot with our body language, like... If we're face to face with a person, sometimes we don't even need a verbal response. We, you know, people can read our facial expression. So when being a rock, we want to make sure that we are really, really non-reactive in our face or defensive in our body language, relaxed, calm, and just present. Yeah. Sometimes this can be hard to do because we're reactive as humans and when we're being attacked, it's very, very natural to be reactive especially with our body language so some tips for this to kind of disengage from that is to try not to make eye contact try to maybe focus on like an object in the distance like if you're in a meeting with your narcissistic boss and they're ripping you apart and telling you all the areas that you suck and everything you've done wrong this last quarter try to look maybe at an object just slightly past their head not actually in their face that can kind of help stop any type of negative Facial reactions that tell you tell them that they're getting to you. Eye contact implies connection and we want to disconnect as much as possible. In situations where you're not put in a corner, try to focus on a different activity. Like if you're in an area where you're working and your coworker, going back to the first example, is talking crap about a new person and you're typing on the computer, try to maintain your focus in the activity you're doing. Don't try to stop and then turn to look at that person. Just stay focused on the task at hand and keep your body composed and non-defensive. Something that you can practice doing is trying to go somewhere else in your mind. So basically it's just tuning out a lot of the stuff. So if a toxic person, narcissist trying to press your buttons, going somewhere else in your mind, like being around people that you actually like, that are treat you well, being at a beach somewhere, wherever you can go in your mind that makes you happy, your happy spots. And trying to just not even focus on what they're saying because really their words at the end of the day, they don't matter. Really, they honestly, the opinions of a narcissist, they don't matter. They're not accurate, they're not grounded in reality. All it is is to hurt you, go somewhere else, you do not need to be taking that in. Remind yourself, if you find yourself like on the edge of coming back with some sort of like comments or getting agitated, remind yourself that if I respond to this situation in an emotional matter, I am only reinforcing the behaviors that I want to stop. So every time that I lose my cool, I am giving them the power that they're seeking. And it's just going to make the behaviors continue again and again, the ones that I don't want to continue. Constantly replaying that in your head when you feel like you're about to lose it. Another tip when interacting with a narcissist and trying to be gray rock is to stick to facts only and not emotion. What are the facts of the situation? This was a tip that I gave in that gaslighting video as well on how to undo gaslighting is to making sure that you're sticking to facts and you're only giving factual based responses. You're not giving emotional responses like what are the facts? Facts very rarely contain emotion, right? So just sticking to the facts when you're interacting with them, not acting on emotion. It's important to do when you're trying to be gray rock with someone. And my last tip, which is really important, is when you're going gray rock, don't tell the person that you're gray rocking them. Don't. Because if you tell a narcissist that you're gray rocking them, they're going to see it as a game to try to get you to break. So you might actually cause an exaggeration of their harmful behavior uh, as opposed to a minimization of their harmful behavior, which is what we want to do. And finally, if you are in an abusive situation, seek therapy, seek out help, seek social support. In the description box of all my videos, I leave the numbers to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, so it's down there below. If you need it, use it. Um, it could save your life. If you are in a violent situation, if you are in an abusive situation, 
make sure that you seek help, seek support, seek therapy if you're able to. It's important. You're important. Do it. Well, that is my gray rock video. Hopefully this was helpful in learning some ways to become gray rock and things that work and things that don't work. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I will respond to you. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Help promote this video. Help promote this channel. This content's important for people. It can really help save a life. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. As always, if this is content that you're interested in, subscribe because I release new videos every single week. And I will continue to be releasing videos more of this type as well because this is a subject that is very, very close to my heart and very important to me. Um, so subscribe if you want to see more and have a great day. Uh, again, my name is Jenna. I'm a therapist and I will see you at the next video.